Greta Thunberg is once again making international headlines after fighting for climate change. The 20-year-old is one of the most prominent climate activists in the world and is known for challenging world leaders to take immediate action. Around 20 climate activists, including Greta Thunberg, took part in a protest outside an entrance to the port of the Swedish city of Malmo yesterday, briefly blocking road traffic to the oil port. The group called Reclaim the Future has been holding the protest for a week straight now. I'm here because if you have a possibility to speak up and to take action, I think that is your, your duty, especially in times like these, with an ex escalating climate crisis that is already a matter of life and death for countless of people all over the globe. Earlier this week, Thunberg was arrested in the same spot for the same protest. It's not the first time the climate change activist has been arrested for making her voice heard. A spokesperson for the group said they are carrying out the blockades to protest the fossil fuel industry and to prevent the transport of fossil fuel products to the port. Tweeting over the weekend, Thunberg said, The climate crisis is a matter of life and death for countless people. We choose to physically stop fossil fuel infrastructure. We are reclaiming the future. Earlier this month, Thunberg spoke at the Bonn COP28 conference and accused those in power of acting in their own interests and said her role as an activist was to call them out and tell the truth. The political will is nowhere to be seen. The people in power are spending their time looking for false solutions and finding and creating loopholes which maintains business as usual and keeps them in the position of power. They are failing us here in this room, they are failing our children, they are failing all of humanity and the future generations to come, but most importantly, they are failing the people bearing the brunt of this crisis today. And she's not wrong. The pace of climate change was not slowed by the global COVID-19 pandemic, and the world remains behind in its battle to cut carbon emissions. Reduction targets are not being met, and there is a rising likelihood the world will miss its Paris Agreement target of reducing global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. Greenhouse gas emissions keep growing. Global temperatures keep rising. And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. Starting tomorrow, French President Emmanuel Macron will host world leaders and experts in Paris for a climate summit aimed at pinning down a roadmap for debt relief and climate finance. Joining us now to talk about where we're at in the fight against climate change is environmentalist Ian Borsick from Environment Hamilton. So Ian, it's a big question, but where are we in the global fight against climate change? Um, well, we're behind. Um, there has been uh, some pretty significant events that we've seen both here in Canada and worldwide that is, I think, really showing how far behind we are and how much work is left to be done. Um, right now, based off of international agreements that were signed by all of our federal leaders across the world, um, we're not meeting those targets. Um, and in addition to that, um, a variety of other uh, major institutions, uh, economic players around the world are really starting to renege on their commitments. And we're also starting to see how some of the commitments that we've seen so far um, quite possibly aren't having the intended outcomes that we hoped for with regards to, you know, carbon credits and offsets and the like there. So things are looking dire and there's a lot of work that needs to be done and we need to, you know, really cut through the BS in a lot of ways to figure out what is actually being done, um, which is unfortunately not enough. Speaking of targets, do you think it's possible for us to hit the ones set out in the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement? Right now, it is still technically possible. Um, so according to the ICPP or the ICPP, um, the Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change, um, we do technically have the, the feasibility of reaching those targets. Um, however, it would require, as according to the IPCC, an incredible reduction in fossil fuel use that, quite frankly, we are not going to see. 
Uh, politically, uh, decisions are being made to lock in fossil fuel infrastructure. We're seeing continued extraction, continued uh, burning of fossil fuels, especially when all perfectly viable alternatives exist. And so while it's technically feasible to remain to, uh, true to that 1.5 uh, degree target, um, it is very much looking like we're going to overshoot it, purely because the action that was promised to us by our political, political leaders um, is not happening. For a lot of people, the thought of attempting to save the Earth from climate destruction can feel like a huge and daunting task. What advice can you give people about how they can contribute and not feel like just a blip on the radar? Absolutely. So it's absolutely vital for all of us to recognize that anyone can join the environmental movement globally. It can start tonight. It can start tomorrow. You can decide to become an environmentalist whenever you'd like. And what that means is, is that we all have to do our own individual actions that will reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But more importantly than that, we need to combine our political will together to put pressure on our political leaders to do something about climate change. You can ride your bike, you can give up meat on Mondays, you can give up meat entirely. That will have a pretty big impact for you as an individual, specifically for us as Canadians. We have very large carbon footprints as individuals, you know, globally speaking. But to truly achieve the, the, the generational change that's necessary to really save this planet, as you said, we're going to require us to band together and to have a cohesive political movement that will put pressure on our governments to make this change that's necessary and make them holding power contingent on them actually acting out and following through on their promises. And that can only be done when pressure is put on our political leaders. And if those political leaders aren't doing that work, they need to be replaced by people who will. Thanks so much for joining us, Ian. It's always a pleasure to talk to you about this. Yeah, thank you so much.